All right, so Brexit happened. Britain decided to leave the European Union. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. It was a messy divorce, especially when it came to Northern Ireland. See, Northern Ireland shares a land border with the Republic of Ireland, which is still part of the EU. Before Brexit, this wasn't a big deal. Goods and people could move freely, but after Brexit, it became a huge headache. Nobody wanted a hard border with checkpoints and customs officials. It would be bad for peace and bad for business, so they came up with the Northern Ireland Protocol. Think of it as a compromise, a way to keep things running smoothly, or at least that was the idea. The goal, avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland while still protecting the EU's single market. It was a tough task and it led to, let's say, some creative solutions. The peace process in Northern Ireland established by the Good Friday Agreement was at stake. Economically, Northern Ireland faced uncertainty with potential disruptions to trade and daily life. Politically, tensions rose as different groups had varying opinions on the best way forward. Imagine a line you can cross without even realising it. That's what the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland was like before Brexit. The protocol aimed to keep it that way. Why was this so important? Because of history, that's why. For decades, there was a lot of conflict in Northern Ireland. A hard border would have brought back bad memories and could have even sparked new tensions. But here's the other problem. The EU has strict rules about goods coming in from non-EU countries. Without the protocol, Northern Ireland would have been a backdoor for stuff that didn't meet those rules. So the protocol tried to thread the needle, keep the border open, but also keep the EU happy. Sounds impossible? Well, it kind of was. The protocol's solution? Make Northern Ireland follow some EU rules, even though it's part of the UK. This meant goods coming from Great Britain to Northern Ireland needed to be checked. Yep, more paperwork. It also meant Northern Ireland had to follow some EU rules on things like food standards and product safety. This didn't make everyone happy, especially businesses used to trading freely within the UK. Then there's the consent mechanism. This basically said that the Northern Ireland Assembly could vote on whether to keep the protocol after a few years. It was supposed to give them a say, but it ended up causing more arguments. Section four, trouble in paradise, protocol problems. You can't please everyone and the protocol definitely didn't. A lot of people in Northern Ireland, especially those who identify as British, felt like it was separating them from the rest of the UK. There were also practical problems. Remember those checks on goods? They caused delays and shortages. Imagine your favorite British sausages suddenly becoming harder to find. Not ideal. The political situation got messy too. The Northern Ireland Assembly was paralyzed by arguments over the protocol. And the UK government started threatening to ignore parts of it, which made the EU pretty angry. Section five, a new hope, the Windsor framework. Fast forward to 2023 and things were still a mess. Enter the Windsor framework, a new agreement between the UK and the EU. It was supposed to fix some of the protocol's problems. The Windsor framework promised to reduce those pesky checks on goods. It also gave the Northern Ireland Assembly more of a say in how EU rules applied to them. Will it work? Time will tell. There are still some people who hate the protocol and everything it stands for, but at least the UK and the EU are talking again. And that's got to be a good thing, right?